I am the contrary. This is my world. Hi, I'm Prashantu Roy. I'm a technology analyst and a green evangelist. And I'm going to be debating with Rajiv Makhni today on is this the beginning of the end of Apple? I don't think it is. I think they're pretty strong with a huge lineup. It's not always the and one more thing kind of thing which used to be whipped out of Steve Jobs' pocket. But they have strong market share, huge brand recall. They're in a position where they're big, they're stable, but they've got billions of dollars in cash. And I think they are pretty strong. Steve Jobs and his reality distortion field, the cult of Apple, the Apple fanboys, the Apple army, queues outside stores for days, $10,000 being paid to the first person in line in exchange for that position. All those amazing stories, urban legends are all about one company, Apple. And today, we feel that the chink in the armor, the start of Apple losing its cult image has started, that's because of the new products. Well, the person right next to me is a person who usually agrees with me on this, but today he thinks Apple is God. And to intimidate me, he's taken out two products. Just before we started, he took out his bag, took out an iPad, took out a MacBook Air, the very, very nice 11 inch super thin one. He does say it's a weapon that in case I make too many uh, points that he has no answer to, he will use this blade to cut me to bits. Uh, but at the end of it, we shall find out if it's really true. Apple, God, but is God getting slightly battered and shattered and not as omnipotent and powerful as before? You know, it's a juggernaut. And uh, I mean, for me, the epiphany was when uh, a couple of years ago, I was speaking at a prominent uh, women's college in Delhi University. Wow, so two, and two things you plugged in together, that you speak at colleges and that and, also women's colleges. That is and, very nicely put and, together in one shot. And we spoke about tech trends. And I said, the cloud, have you guys heard of the cloud? What's the cloud? And you know, one third of the audience raised their hands. And everybody had the same answer. It's a storage technology invented by Apple. Oh. Okay, so so that was the epiphany that, okay. The reality distortion field, you mean? Uh, well, it was an epiphany that if you get into something and you take up Mindshare and then you say that this area was invented by Apple. So therefore they've invented the PC, the, the MP3 player, uh, the, the, the phone? smartphone, yes, they invented the, the smartphone, smartphone. Okay. and now they're going to invent the watch very soon. But the point today is not that is this the beginning of the end for Apple. Is Apple over? Of course not. It's unbelievable what this company is achieving. And I'm the first to agree. I'm just saying, are you seeing chinks in the armor? Is this the same company that literally had no, absolutely no weaknesses? It had the biggest barrier. It was like Game of Thrones that almost impossible to scale Ice Tower. Is the first cracks appearing? You know, uh, a lot of companies, well, not a lot, but maybe a half dozen have gone through this cycle of innovation of great products and then you have an upswing. Now, Apple is somewhere which is still on an upswing, which may have leveled out a bit uh, because you can't keep up the pace of new product releases in the same way that you can as a smaller company. And by smaller now, I mean when you're in the billions of dollars or even tens. Now, when you're at the 100 or 170 billion range, you want to look at what HP or Microsoft went through and maybe Google to a lesser extent. You know, you had a lot of great innovative stuff. But once you stabilize, you have great products, you completely occupy Mindshare. So people say that, yes, these are the guys who invented it. And I think it is, it's very much there. You, you've taken a few very, very interesting names, HP, Dell, uh, many other mm. companies like Nokia, Blackberry. You know, at one time mm. when they were absolutely and totally at the top, if I had sat down a few years back and started talking to you about Nokia, you may have said the same thing. Nokia in the world of mobile phones is God. You can't displace God out there. Well, God got displaced in the mobile phone space for sure. So I'm saying that there is literally no company that is bulletproof, at least in the world of technology. Answer this, in the iPhone 6 or the 6 Plus, Plus, it's never been that Apple has taken out a product that is a very important one in their life cycle of one year and not come up with one single feature which, say, which makes you say, oh my God, I've got to get it for that. Can you tell me one in either of these? No, I think they are simply continuing with the most usable phone there is. 
and when they deviate from that, so for example, the iPhone, you could buy it in any color as long as it was white or black, and then they suddenly came out with lots of colors in the 5C, and that has, that has not really okay, worked so let's out just, very let's well. See, I know what you're going to be saying, so I will let you continue, but I'm just going to come to the iPhone 5C. The first ever serious Apple failure discontinued literally because there has been no announcement about it, might continue for a while, it's free for people who take the two-year contract, whatever. The first truly tragic failure by Apple, not very many people are talking about it, but there have been no failures of products by Apple in a long time. This one is a little under the radar because nobody really cared about it, but it is a humongous failure. So I think this was uh, one of the things they tried, which is putting in a lot of product skews when their very focused philosophy as driven home by Steve Jobs was a single skew, mm -hmm. okay, or maybe two skews, black and white. And I think that was, that was one of the great reasons, that was one of the reasons why the developer community loved Apple because it's really one thing you develop for and you get money out of it. Uh, I think there have been, there's course corrections which are going to happen. Now for a very large company, course corrections can be expensive. And, but I think those will happen. Having said that, I think it's great that they're able to support multiple hardware platforms with the most current I so completely software. disagree. Have you seen iOS 7 on a 4 or an iPhone 4S? Have you seen the performance? But then you I'm know, actually I think surprised. they fixed some of that with iOS 8 <laughs> because iOS 8, although it took me three hours to put it on this iPad 2, uh, the fact is it works better than iOS 7 did when I first installed it and it sucks less battery you mean, life. You mean course correction again has yeah. happened. So, so you're saying lots of mistakes coming from Apple, but they'll survive it and they'll go from strength to strength. Is that what you're saying? Uh, they, they'll, they'll survive it. There'll be course corrections. They, every company, I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff which they try. Google is a great example. It tries so many things and it kills them. I mean, they killed Google Plus. Okay, so, or at least they're about to kill Google Plus. So with Apple- Are you Apple, making the announcement for them? I mean, are you, are you taking <laughs> it forward? Because, you know, <laughs> I mean, Google would be very surprised that you've actually said it right now, because they've been well, denying they've, they've, it all the while. I mean, yeah, till no, today- so they're, they're Now they're saying that when you sign up for Gmail, you don't have to sign up for Google, Google Plus. Correct. Vic Gandotra, when he left, and he was in charge of Google Plus, and there was some talk of- So I, I think uh, Apple stuff has, is smaller. Uh, the course corrections are smaller and are on fewer products. Quick question, okay. iPhone 5C, abject and absolute disastrous failure, agreed? More or less, yeah. Yes, okay. So one of the first major failures for the company. What happens, it was under the radar, nobody really anyway wanted it, so it's not really made big news that it's, it hasn't, the next version hasn't been announced. Nobody questioned it. I did, but nobody answered it. Can the next one be a failure of one of the iPhones, the iPhone 6 Plus. Let's just, I mean, just hypothetical, I'm painting a picture, just, you know, just bear with me for a second. Uh, I don't see that happening because they have a few aces up their sleeve. Okay. One of the biggest aces is really the margin. There's a huge margin on the iPhone. And that margin is by whatever yardstick, you know, anywhere in the 30% kind of range. Do you so know that there Samsung... is flexibility. Okay. To drop to, that price. To drop the price. Which, which is something they don't resort <gasps> to. No, they uh, will not do that. But they will I mean, call it something else and they will introduce. Scheme. scheme. Uh, yeah, so they'll call it a six, uh, six super, six port. They'll call it the six port and it'll be the same thing but with a stripe and it'll be 30% cheaper. We'll come down to the not iWatch, Apple Watch, right? First of all, branding di disaster. You know, uh, it looks like it, but they're competing with Switzerland and not Silicon Valley, as they said. Okay, so they may say that, but at the end of the day, do you see that clunky fat watch uh, as un-Apple-like as possible, the chunky little thing that they want people to wear on their wrist, becoming a fashion statement in Paris? Uh, I think the, the watch has been a bit, of a, a bit of a misstep because they should have been able to position it as an independent product. But oh, completely, I think, yes. completely and so totally. Their, Apple should have taken that first step. I mean, Samsung has. Apple should have made that a uh, standalone works. But if it does pair to your uh, iPhone, great. But otherwise, it's pretty much everything and anything. So that, I think, is something they might do uh, later, as people have been telling me, because I've been fairly critical of this. And they said, oh, the iPod oh, and came then, out okay, and so iTunes no. was always... Oh, I thought you were saying that you've been critical, so they immediately are taking corrective measures. They are not said, that, unfortunately. Oh, my God, PKR <laughs> No, Sadly, are. they're not. <laughs> but uh, it it appears that going by the past record of iTunes and then going on to Windows and all of that, they could do that maybe a year down the line. I'm glad that we established that you've said the iPhone 5C failure, uh, the tablets 
from Apple taking a bit of a fall. The iWatch or the Apple Watch, a bit of a misstep. That the 6 Plus could fail <laughs> and that come, Apple could take down their prices by 30% to cell phones. That I'm is so a, glad we agreed. That is a, a very effective distortion of reality. <laughs> Thank you so much. As always, it's an absolute pleasure. And Likewise. hopefully I'll uh, talk to you again maybe six months from now when we can buy the iPhone 6 Plus. What do you say? 30% off? What do you call it? The port? The port. <laughs> the port. With all right. Will all of that happen? Will it not happen? Well, it is Apple. It's a company that has always, always done what nobody else can do. Will it continue or will it fall slightly to the wayside? Will the beginning of the end start after that? Well, maybe we'll revisit this, like I said, in six months. And if, if the iPhone 6 Plus is available for 30% lesser, then you could just come back and watch the show because you know what will happen after that. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>